Hey guys, today we are going to take a serious talk on what has happened with Magic the Gathering. A lot of you will criticize me for criticizing Wizards of the Coast and other YouTube content creators for promoting products that are... It's not my opinion, the products are just bad. The card selection is poor, the card stock is poor, the card printing is poor, there are multiple leaks. Some leaks from people like entering, some leaks that we don't know where it came from. Some leaks from private Facebook groups, they're hiring investigators to watch people's social medias, including private Facebook groups like Magic for Bad. They have banned Jeremy and he's still banned for life. They have allowed Alex Bracini to play Magic at a high level again. And even the Italian champion who won the largest magic event, he was recently caught for cheating. So he's a cheater, or a champion is a cheater. Uh, you will have Mero wanting Mike Long to go to Hall of Fame, which Mike Long is a renowned and expert level cheater. And if you don't criticize them, nothing is going to change you're still going to continue a downward spiral. It's very simple. I imagine going to a deli in New York City and you keep buying food from the deli and the deli meats are old, the cheese is moldy. As long as the deli is continuing to sell meats and no one's complaining on Yelp or Google review, the deli is not even going to know anything's wrong. The lack of the lack of quality control is very, very scary. You have multiple issues with quality, uh, with the physical card itself, with the leaking of documents, including all of Ixlon being spoiled, all the rares and mythics of Ixlon being spoiled, all the Commander 2017 decks being spoiled before, and most recently the Dominion leaks. This has existed for a long time. We know that God books from New Phyrexia existed and pros were able to abuse them and take advantage of it. Uh, we know that because Guillaume, one of the Guillaumes, got banned for some time and now he's back again. So it is quite compelling and very interesting that at this moment in time, what Wizard of the Coast is doing is they're hiring investigators. They are openly on social media posting that they want you to join the Spinks of Investigation. They have, our judges have sued them and lost. We're living in an environment where judges are no longer considered connected to Wizard of the Coast at all, although they have to abide by rules. And of course, the predators, the children predators, judges and store owners still are out there. If you don't criticize it, you might not know there's a better version of magic. Um, there is a much better version of magic. I remember magic when it was beta, it was Arabian Nights, it was legends. Uh, it was just very magical because it was a place for people who didn't quite belong. Now we have changed he, she into they. We have really pushed the female to magic, which I think is great, but you took away from the main demographic, which I'm not even the main demographic. The main demographic is clearly white males. So you have all of this social policy, you have all of this um, incredible... I don't know how else to say it, except it's folly. They are repeating the same mistakes over and over again. The card quality, maybe one or two sets you realize, okay, this is bad. Let's hire someone. So for the worst case where the entire box of Modern Masters or the entire box of Eternal Iconic has a line, we should at least you know be able to catch that or there's not enough ink on this card, or the foil is not right. You don't need the person to catch every mistake. 
but it's clear to me there's no person. And the funding has been removed to hire investigators. Out of all the things and people you need right now, are you telling me you need investigators? That's what you want to hire. You don't want to hire a developer for Magic Online. You don't want to hire a better developer for Magic Arena. You don't want to hire quality control for your cardboard. You don't want to hire a cardstock expert or a printing expert that can you know, help at least mitigate some of the printing issues. You don't want to hire someone who prevents leaks. You don't want to hire, um, I don't know. It seems strange to me that when you go on their website and you look at what jobs they're, and obviously they're doing the great designer search right now. I don't even know if we need a great designer right now. I think we just need someone to make sure the quality is high. So eventually when you re, when you have something like Masters 25, it's supposed to be a great celebration. People are not happy with Tree of Redemption. That's fine in my opinion. But then it's not randomized and you have one of the biggest YouTubers have two random boxes with these exact same rares and mythics. What do you think the eventual outcome will be? Do you think people are going to be happy? Do you think people are, are not going to know? I mean, all of this is based on knowledge. And back in the past, maybe this has happened, we just didn't really know about it. And there wasn't a YouTube channel that opened so much product like Rudy. And even if they opened the product, I don't think they would tell anyone. Because if you're going to open a ton of boxes like this, and you know which boxes have Jace, not which packs, let me put it this way. You know which boxes have which type of cards, then you can go. You can take your customers to host town, and they couldn't do anything. So in the past, maybe this has happened. It's kind of like the Star State of Games buyout. They buy out all the time. They only get caught a few times. It's like cheaters, right? Cheaters cheat all the time, and they get caught once or twice. Or in Alex's case, m multiple times on camera. But they don't, you cheat maybe a hundred times, get caught once. Maybe this is what's happening with today's social media, with Rudy, who, you know, is very transparent. Because I could see a scenario where Card Kingdom opens two boxes like this. Uh, maybe they don't even film it. And they're like, wait a second. We know which boxes have J's. Let's figure this out from the thousand boxes that we have. Let's open 50 of them, map out the boxes, and then sell the ones that don't have Jace, open the ones that do. Big volume stores will take advantage of this. It's not even just the pallets, it's the cases. Like the problem is much more severe than you can realize. Box mapping isn't just for a box, right? It's not just the boosters in the box. It can be for a case, it can be for a pallet even. My personal opinion is you do have to criticize. You do have to ask them if you're going to pay $150, $200 a box, I would expect the contents to be random since we're playing a lottery game anyway. I would not expect the lottery to be against you. Now, I know a lot of you guys would say, oh, my local star is not going to do that. My lo when you're forced to choose between bankruptcy and doing this to get a slight edge, what do you think your local game store owner is going to do? Think about it. Like, just think about it for a moment. If I told you, you can get away with it, and no one would know the difference because the boxes are sealed, and the booster packs are sealed, and most people are casual players, and there's no ill effect on your store, and you're going to make a few hundred more dollars because now you have all the Jaces, do you do it? What if your store is on the verge of bankruptcy and you need to sell that Jace for $50 buy list? Then does it matter? I just find it a lot of this policy stuff is ridiculous that they are so hyper focused on social media. Like MTG headquarters got banned for life. That's a very, very high ban. That's the top ban. And there's so much more issues going on. 
you have child predators, you have poor quality, you have just very ugly cards, to be honest. Like, it wasn't always this way. I get it if, like, this was a new card game and we didn't have all these excellent cards in the past before. And I get it if, like, once in a while we have a leak and it was some uh, bad actor. But this is every single set. This is every other set we got leaks. There's no one to point the finger at anymore. This is every single set that the print is coming out ugly and, you know, misprinted. And now, like, misprints aren't rare anymore. They're just misprints. Like, they just happen all the time. And this isn't the only set that can be mapped. So, if you don't criticize them, nothing is ever going to change because they're going to keep selling you product. And maybe they don't even know this is bad. Maybe they think mapping is actually good. If we don't tell them it's bad and we're, they're selling more product than ever before, then from a business standpoint, why would they care? We will get map boxes. We're going to get really poor card stock. We're going to get very poor print quality. We're going to get people banned for life for being meme lords. We're going to get more investigators who go into private Facebook groups and screenshot everyone in the private Facebook group to get banned. It's a scary, scary environment because we are the customers. We are the blanking customers. Think about how they treat employees or pseudo-employees, judges. Think about how they treat like their artists. And, you know, like, do you think... If they're going to treat their customers who are, is handing them money like this. I haven't seen a company like this before. Um, I have not seen customers. And then the customers are so supportive of them that they continue to buy and buy. <laughs> they don't know better. They just don't get it. Like, If you continue to buy, you're saying... It's okay for boxes to be mapped. It's okay for me to be hosed. It's okay for the card quality to be lower. Please lower the card quality. That is what you're saying to them. You vote with your pot, you vote with your wallet, and I'd say we vote no. Anyway, bye guys.